Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses, which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course, which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today where we are still continuing with discussion of chapter 3 of the research proposal and today we are going to discuss section 3.9 which is titled ethical principles or ethical considerations. The lesson that has just ended we have looked at section 3.8. Section 3.8 is titled Data Analysis Techniques and this is where you describe the analysis techniques that you are going to employ to analyze your data. And we have looked at how to analyze quantitative data using statistics and how to analyze qualitative data using thematic analysis. So our concentration today is on section 3.9 and it mainly deals with ethics. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of ethics, discuss the ethical principles of research, and explain the requirements of section 3.9. So in our uh, uh, 10 subsections of our chapter 3, we have almost we are almost coming to the end of discussing chapter 3 of the research proposal so we are in section 3.9 now when we talk about ethics we are talking about something that is central to the research process and more so as social sciences because you deal with human subjects you rely on people to answer to your instruments and therefore as a researcher you need to take care of the various ethical issues at different levels of the research process. So ethics are the norms for conduct that distinguishes between acceptable and unacceptable behavior and this can be written or unwritten but they govern our expectation of our own and others behavior. So when we bring them to research, we are talking about the norms that govern how you will conduct research and even disseminate the findings. So when you are looking about at research ethics, it means in section 3.9, you are asking yourself, which are the principles that I will apply to ensure that as I conduct research, I am behaving in an acceptable way. And the way my respondents or what my respondents expect of me is what I am doing. And also what you expect from them is what they are doing. So there are various ethical uh, principles that we need to take care of as we conduct our research. The first one is called beneficence. And remember they are not uh, arranged in any order. Beneficence means doing good. Research should only be carried out if some sort of benefit or good can be derived from it. In academic research, we look at this doing good as our research contributes to knowledge or improved service or treatment. 
If the research that you want to conduct has no benefit at all, then the project is unethical. And that is why if you remember in our chapter 1, we talked about section 1.6 which is significance of the study. That is why we write significance of the study to show that our project has got some good or it will end up doing some good to various people, organizations, institutions, etc. The other principle is autonomy or self-rule. Now with autonomy, it means that researchers should disclose information to the participants before they participate in the study so that they can make individual choice on whether to participate or not and that is why we normally request our respondents to sign informed cons uh, consent where they agree on their own without coercion that they have agreed to take part in the study and that you as a researcher you will collect information from them so do not coerce your respondents let them make free will and decide either to participate or not to participate in the study they have autonomy non-maleficence meaning do not harm this uh, principle places an obligation on researchers not to harm their respond uh, their respondents or other people or expose them to unnecessary risks harm can be physiological emotional social or economic in nature for instance if coming to collect data from me may cost me my job then it means that that is a harm that will be inflicted by the research and this is the principle that we are saying it is your responsibility my responsibility as a researcher not to harm your respondents or expose them to risks justice or fairness this means that everyone and especially those participating in the study will be treated equally or fairly for instance some of the consultancy work may have allocated some amount of money to be given to those who participate in the study ensure that what is allocated will go to the right person and in the equal amount or the required amount velocity or truth telling or honesty researchers should always be honest with their participants and they keep any promises that they make do not fabricate falsified or misrepresent data and do not deceive your respondents your colleagues your sponsors or the public be honest do not promise what you cannot deliver do not tell your respondents that they, are, they will be paid for instance for taking part in the study and once they take part in the study you take off because there was no allocation for them participating in the study please be honest and tell it as it is privacy this concerns the respect for limited access to another person be it physically emotionally or cognitively now although the participants will grant you access to their thoughts and feelings when they agree to participate it does not give you unlimited access they may decide not to respond to some questions they may decide not to discuss certain issues because of their privacy and you as a researcher needs to respect that the other one is confidentiality and anonymity confidentiality means that the individuals are free to give or withhold some information as they wish and anonymity means the identity cannot be linked with personal responses so 
when we talk about confidentiality, we are talking about this person deciding what to give and what to withhold. And then anonymity, do not dis uh, disclose the person that gave you the information. That is why you can have an identifiable numbers that you can use for your respondents with a list of those people and it will not be part of the research study. The other principle is protection of the vulnerable groups. For instance, the elderly, the sick, those who may be suffering from a particular disease, including children. So when you are dealing with these vulnerable groups, please ensure that you protect them. Protect them in the form of even the information that they give and protect them in form of seeking concept, consent, especially when you are dealing with other age. Another principle that many researchers ignore, and especially when it comes to consultancy jobs that are paid, is to ensure that you have skills and competencies to conduct the research. It is unethical to agree to take a study when you know you do not have the skills. It would be prudent to look for a colleague whom you, whom you would work with instead of embarrassing yourself by going to the field or taking up an assignment that you cannot deliver. Carefulness and respect for intellectual property. We shall discuss further the issues of plagiarism, but always give credit to the intellectual property of others. So in section 3.9, the researcher outlines the ethical considerations that he or she will put in place as they conduct their research so that they can protect their respondents. Do you have to explain all the 10 that we have discussed and many others? The answer is no. So based on your research problem, then identify between three and five ethical principles that you need to uphold as you conduct the research. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. We have looked at ethical principles and we have explained what you need to write in section 3.9. Our next lesson you'll be looking at the last section of chapter 3 which is methodology matrix. Thank you and feel free to uh, uh, subscribe to this channel, like this video and comment. Feel free to put any question that you have on the comment section.